uh, hello. Uh, in the previous lecture, we saw uh, SISO decoders, soft and soft out decoders for repetition code and single parity check code. Uh, there were some interesting calculations we did. Uh, maybe some of it was a little complicated. Uh, I think the most important thing is to understand how the SISO decoder works and how to implement it. That is sort of the focus of this code. Uh, but once in a while, it's also good to see where uh, some of these things come from. Uh, such intuition is good in uh, debugging, etc. Sometimes. Okay. So let's uh, let's uh, proceed a little bit more on that. Uh, so I want to summarize quickly what this SISO decoder does for the single parity check code. So that is uh, the most important ingredient that we will use again and again in the later part of the course. Okay. So so let me quickly summarize single parity check code. or SPC code, okay. Uh, I took the 3 comma 2 example. Uh, so let me first do the 3 comma 2 example, uh, 3 comma 2. Uh, so we had uh, two messages, M1, M2 and this gets encoded into, into a code word which is uh, C1, C2, C3. How does the encoding happen? C1 equals M1, C2 equals M2 and C3 equals C1 XOR C2, right? So the overall parity is maintained here and after this you do BPSK symbol by symbol transmission over the Gaussian channel and then you get your received vector R. You remember this uh, R we thought of as the belief itself, the channel LLR is uh, like the R. And then the SISO decoder produces uh, intrinsic, extrinsic and then uh, the total, right. So how does uh, that work? So it produces capital L1, capital L2, capital L3. The input small l1, uh, small li is 2 times 2 by sigma square times ri. This is the channel LLR. We saw this derivation in the last class and then uh, there was this uh, function f of x which was log tan hyperbolic modulus of x by 2, okay. And then uh, we saw that this capital L1 is going to become small l1 plus lx1. Uh, in fact, the same thing happens for everything l2 plus lx2 and L3 is L3 plus LX3 and then what is each of these LX1s? So the LX1, okay, we describe the sign separately and the absolute value separately. The sign is uh, sign of L2 times sign of L3, right? And then the absolute value is given by F of f of L2 plus f of L3, okay. So, so in the decoder for the calculation of L extrinsic, uh, the function f is involved. Uh, so, this f of x is uh, log tan hyperbolic of x by 2 and uh, I put absolute value here and one more thing to keep in mind is tan hyperbolic is something that is going to go less than 1. So, log of that will be negative and we want f to deal with uh, positive values. So, we will put an absolute value around it, okay. So, this is the definition of f of x. There is an absolute value around the log tan hyperbolic as well, okay. So, once you make this definition, uh, this is fairly straightforward to see. Uh, the absolute value of L x 1 is f of f of L 2 plus f of L 3 and the sign of L x 1 is product of the two signs, okay. So, let us see what this function is uh, and uh, plot it and see how it behaves in MATLAB. Okay, so we are going to go there. So let me go to my MATLAB screen. So first thing we will do is we will define this function f which is uh, like I said absolute value of log of tan hyperbolic of absolute value of x by 2. Okay, so that is the function f and then one can define x in this range minus 5 to plus 5 and then you can plot of x and f of x, okay. 
and you can see how it works and uh, let me show you a slightly zoomed up version of this window assuming I can get it to work yeah there it is and maybe I should get the axis on okay and you can see how this works so you know, as a function of x this function f falls very very steeply okay for very low values of x this function f is very high okay and as x increases in value this function falls quite steeply so even if you look at the value of f of 2 it's uh, it's quite low okay on the other hand values of f close to 0 are really really high 3 and 4 and all that okay so this gives you an idea for how to approximate f okay in case you want to do a simple calculation it's a nonlinear function so if you want to approximate f one uh, sort of simple thing to do is uh, tend to give importance to the uh, dominant values based on the argument okay so if f of x if x is very small then f of x is very large okay if x is slightly larger then f of x becomes very very small okay so using this one of the very popular approximations for this uh, for this kind of calculation is if you have f of l2 plus f of l3 this is approximately f of min of absolute value of l2 absolute value of l3 okay so so because remember what i told you this f function when the argument becomes large f of x when x is large becomes very small okay so out of l2 and l3 whichever is smaller in absolute value is going to dominate the sum f of l2 f of l3 okay so f of l2 plus f of l3 uh, is dominated by the minimum of the two values so f of min of absolute value of l2 comma absolute value of l3 is a good approximation okay so that's this is once again it's approximate it's not exact uh, but it's a nice approximation the reason is once you make this approximation absolute value of lx1 has this very very simple expression f of f of min of absolute value of l2 absolute value of l3 and we know that f is its own inverse f of f of x is x itself and so this will just become min of absolute value of l2 comma absolute value of l3 so this approximation is called the min sum approximation and it's very very popular in all implementations of this uh, this kind of extrinsic calculation okay instead of looking at uh, log tan hyperbolic and all of that we can simply look at the minimum of those two values so if you want to do f of f of l2 plus f of l3 you look at the min of l2 l3 okay and then simply take as that take that as the lx1 okay so it's a much much simpler calculation than doing the nonlinear log tan hyperbolic and all that okay simply minimum of absolute value of l2 and absolute value of l3 okay so this min sum approximation is, uh, is quite a bit popular uh, so i want to maybe illustrate that a little bit in matlab okay okay so to illustrate how this uh, approximation works so let's look at some received values so i'll consider received values of this form 1 plus uh, i'll put a noise variance here maybe the noise variance is 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 or something okay and then a random noise 1 comma 3 okay so this gives me three received values uh, you can see the first two are greater than one and the last one has gone negative so there is some uh, error etc uh, maybe we'll consider one more okay so this is going a little bit high uh, yeah but this should this should be fine okay so this is a this is a good uh, received value I, I didn't want to have some error in the value so I'm picking some other value here uh, so next first step is to calculate the channel LLR if you remember the channel LLR is 2 by sigma squared and the sigma I have picked here is 0 0.8 okay 2 by sigma squared times r okay so this is the channel LLR and you can see it has a slightly larger value so it goes to 2 3 and 12 okay now uh, let's illustrate what happens in lx1 calculation so if you look at lx uh, lx uh, lx for the first one okay so this is going to be uh, the sign is going to be the product of the signs of L2 and L3. So in this case, both L2 and L3 are positive. So you see, L2 and L3 are positive. So, so one the sign becomes just positive. So the sign of LX1 is positive. So LX1 comes out to be f of f of L of 2 plus f of L of 3. 
So that is the answer. Okay. So if you want to look at the calculation closely, f of L of 2 became 0 0.03 and f of L of 3 became something into 10 power minus 5. Okay. So like I said, if you look at it, L of 2 is much smaller than L of 3. So the minimum value of these two is dominating the calculation. Okay. So that is what you got and uh, no wonder uh, the L x 1 is uh, so close to the min of L of 2 comma L of 3. Okay, so you see both of these are really really close. Okay, so now L x 1 is the not, not the only thing you will compute, you will also compute L x 2 is not it. L x 2 is uh, once again all 3 L's are positive. Okay, If you look at the value of L again all of the 3 L's are positive. So, the sign becomes uh, positive throughout sin of L 1 into sin of L 3 is also positive. So, if you want to compute L x 2 in absolute value, this is simply f of f of L of 1 plus f of L of 3 is not it. This is the formula we saw before and once again this you can see is very very close to the minimum value it is 2.04 and then 12.07. Uh, really that f of l of 3 does not contribute anything, it goes to 10 power minus 3. On the other hand, if you look at l x 3, you see it is a little bit more difficult uh, because l of 1 and l of 2 are close to each other. Okay, So, but let us uh, see what we can do here. If you do this, you get something close to 1.9. Okay, So, it is not uh, too bad, it is sort of close to 2, but not that close. It is away by like 0.1 or something like that, but that is something we can live with. Okay. So, this approximation of f of f of l l 1 plus f of l 2 by the minimum of absolute value of l 1 l 2, it is a very powerful approximation. It simplifies the decoder in many ways and in fact, all practical decoders more or less use this min sum approximation. Okay. So, there are some modifications to the algorithm. Sometimes, the people approximate the min sum using this offset min sum method, but uh, let us not worry too much about that for, for, for now this approximation is uh, very very useful okay so so let's go back to the picture we had uh, we're going to approximate the absolute value uh, in this fashion okay so i'm going to show also maybe one more illustration for what happens when there is an error okay so overall overall if you look at lx1 uh, if you look at the value of l and L x 1, L x 2 and L x 3. So, you can see what has happened here. So, you see the first extrinsic LLR is the minimum of the second and third. Okay. So, first one is the minimum of the second and third. The second one, the second one 2.04 is actually the minimum of first and third, first and third and the third one is roughly close to the minimum of first and second. Okay, so it's sort of close to the minimum of first and second. Not exactly equal, but it's roughly close. Okay, so finding the minimums is a good idea. Okay, so let's let's try to do uh, one more case where uh, things maybe are a little bit more difficult. Okay, there it is. So this is a received value where there was one error. Okay, so notice what has happened. I transmitted one one one. Okay, three values one one one. The first one had no error. The second one has an error. Okay. Second one has an error, the third one has no error. Okay. So, now what happens in the decoding is, uh, when, when you try and decode uh, the second bit, okay, you will go wrong, right? so because it is already gone negative. So, if you just do a threshold decoding, uh, you are going to decode that this is minus 1, on the other hand this is actually plus 1. Okay. Now, let us see how uh, this capital L1, capital L2, capital L3 calculation goes and we will use the min, min sum approximation. So, this L x okay. so you need 3 uh, values here and remember once again the sign also matters okay. the sign sign matters as well. So, L x 1 is the sign of L of 2. Okay. So, first, first calculation is L, L equals 2 by sigma squared. So, we got the L L R channel L L R. The next calculation is for L x 1. Uh, so, now the sign I have to take care of sin of L of 2 multiplied by sin of L of 3 and then multiplied by the absolute value. For the absolute value I can use the f function or I can use the min function min of a b s of 
uh, L of 2 comma ABS of L of 3. So there you go that is LX1. So the extrinsic uh, LLR for the first bit is minus 2.4. So you can see it is sort of close to uh, close to this uh, this uh, the minimum value that you have. Okay. So if you want to do LX2 you can take this first LX1 expression and sort of modify it. LX2 will be sine of L of 1, L of 3, absolute value of L of 1. So again it is 10.04 it is sort of close to both the values are close to each other but nevertheless we are taking min. Okay. And then LX3 is sine of L of 1, L of 2, absolute value of L of 1, L of 2. Okay. So once again it is minus 2.4. Okay. So we had L and the extrinsic LLRs LX1, LX2, LX3 is this and the total LLR is L plus LX1, LX2, LX3 and that will come out as positive. Okay. So, we saw that the initial channel LLR gives you a negative value for the second bit, okay. but after you have done the processing you got positive values throughout and the error is corrected. Not only that you got very high values for the output LLR. So, you have a lot of belief that these values are correct. Okay. So, this was a simple illustration of uh, two things. First, how the single parity check decoder works, the SISO decoder works. You have received values, you convert them into LLRs and then you use this F function and do some nonlinear calculation, you get one decoder or you do this approximation, the min sum approximation and we see that uh, the beliefs get updated very nicely. The channel LLR gets updated with this extrinsic LLR and you get an output LLR capital L as we showed here and these tend to be uh, very good. Now, you can repeat this for other received values as well uh, and, and see how this works to get some more intuition. I also showed you how the function f is, uh, is sort of grows very rapidly. So, you, you have to only look at uh, I mean falls very rapidly I am sorry the function f falls very rapidly. So, you have to only look at uh, lower values of uh, the argument of the function f. Okay. So, as far as this lecture is concerned I will stop and in the next one we will see how to extend the same idea for the single parity check code CISO decoder to larger number of uh, bits in the code word. So, instead of 3 comma 2 supposing I have 10 comma 9 or 8 comma 7 how does the same idea work. Okay. So, we will do that in the next lecture.